Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Well, it's been a very interesting couple of months in technology, and honestly, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be slowing down any anytime soon. There are a ton of things happening right now with product launches, and I think this is going to be continuing, honestly, into next year with a lot of very cool stuff announced at CES. But in this video, we're going to have an update to FSR 3, as well as some RDNA 3 information. But I really want to kick this video off actually discussing some stuff for NVIDIA. The RTX 4080 um, 16 gigabyte has had a number of benchmarks leaked online, and you guys may not be super impressed with the numbers. And we're also going to discuss what has become of the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, I just want to formally apologize for not being on camera yet again in this video and also possibly for a little bit of background echo. I'm not recording in my usual location and tomorrow I'm going to be on a plane and we're flying into uh, Germany. I'm going to be going to Berlin and then we're going to go over to a couple of other locations. But when I come back, there's going to be some big updates to the channel. I'll talk to you about those when, well, I get back because I don't want to take up too much video space for this because, well, let's face it, you guys want to hear about tech stuff. And speaking about tech stuff, let's begin with perhaps one of the more, well, duh things, and that is that the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte is now going to be, well, basically rebranded and slightly changed and become the 4070 Ti. A very quick update for those of you who do um, not quite know what's going on here. So initially, NVIDIA announced three SKUs for the RTX 40 series, the 4090, as well as two RTX 4080s, the 16 and 12 gigabyte. Now, obviously, aside from their memory capacity, the other big change was a cut in the number of CUDA cores, which is obviously going to affect performance as well as, well, the memory bus width. So clearly, this is going to have a big ramification as to the performance. So because there was so much backlash to the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte, um, NVIDIA basically scrapped it and admitted that they got it wrong. And I have to give them credit for that. You know, it's very easy for them to have just put their fingers in the air and just released it anyway, but they did actually just say, you know what, we definitely screwed up here. So the RTX 4070 Ti is going to launch. Now, there has been a lot of conflicting information. Kopitai 7 Kimi, who actually tweeted about this, seems to indicate that the 4080 12 gigabyte is basically just going to be essentially a name swap for the 4070 Ti. I'd previously heard that there was a possibility that there could be a cut in specifications. Now, it won't be drastic, but maybe they'd have cut the memory, for example, down to 11 gigabytes rather than 12. Either way, at the end of the day, this thing is allegedly not going to launch until early next year, so there is, of course, some time still for uh, tweaks to happen. I think a potential reason that NVIDIA will not do this, though, is simply because of the pressure that they are facing right now from AMD. And let's be honest, while there has been somewhat, uh, somewhat of a mixed reception for the RX 7000 series, I have to say that in terms of pricing, it looks spot on. And it's going to be very interesting to see how benchmarks actually compare the various different SKUs over several months because ultimately of course AMD are not going to be releasing all of their variants first and it's going to be very interesting to see also what happens in terms of the mobile market but either way speaking of the RTX 4080 let's continue just for a moment longer with the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte because there have been 
a plethora of benchmarks which have actually leaked. Ulrich 29 and a couple of other folks actually managed to find some results that were published amongst other places on Chip Hill. Of course, I will leave a link to all of this in the video description. Let's first of all talk about the 3D Mark DirectX full path tracing results. So you could see that according to Guru 3D, the RTX 4090 in their benchmarks scored around 135, whereas the previous generation flagship, the 3090 Ti, scores 62. Meanwhile, the RTX 4080 scores considerably worse, just under 90 frames a second. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we also see a significant reduction in performance as well. Now, of course, it does depend upon the benchmark, and it's also very difficult to fully ascertain how these performance numbers are going to compare against like a wider variety of review samples. For example, there could be something hinky going on with the configuration. We don't know what's going on with the drivers and so on and so on. You know, the standard uh, caveats, but it seems that we're looking at around 30 to 40% slower results in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is actually quite a lot. And there are also some other results from Mega Size GPU on Twitter. Now, they've actually had a really good uh, history recently. I follow them myself and I'd encourage you guys to check it out as well. And we also have some clock speed information because this is Time Spy Extreme as well as Time Spy. So the RTX 4090 score, I'm going to be rounding up and down numbers here just for everyone's sanity, typically scores around 35,000 to 36,000 in the performance preset, which is running at 1440p. Meanwhile, the RTX 4080 scores around 28,600, so that's around 80% of the performance. Uh, compare that to the previous generation, which is around 21,000 to 22,000 for the 3090 Ti. As for the Extreme preset, which of course is running at 4K, typically speaking, the 4090 scores around 19,000 to 20,000. I say around, by the way, because obviously it's going to depend on a ton of different things, the ambient temperature of your case, which version of the card you're buying. For example, obviously, if you're getting like a heavily overclocked one, you know, the time of day, the angle of the sun and the moon, a lot of other things are going to affect performance a little bit, including the CPU. But typically speaking, we're looking around 19,000 to 20,000 points for the Extreme preset preset um, using a 4090. The 4080, meanwhile, is almost 70% of that score. It's around 73%. Uh, it's 14,200. Again, I'm rounding up a little bit. And the 3090 Ti typically scores in the high 10,000 marks. It's usually like 10,500 to possibly 10,900. So basically speaking, if you have a 3090 Ti, there is going to be a small upgrade in performance over the 4080. But of course, this card is not really aimed at people who have a 3090 Ti. It would instead be aimed at those who have something like a 3080. So for example, if we were to compare the 3080 10 gigabyte card um, in performance preset, we're looking at 17,600. This is compared to the 4080, which again scores around 28,600. So there is definitely an upgrade path there. Personally speaking, the biggest problem I have with these cards is just I think they're a little too expensive. It's going to be very intriguing to see what happens in concerning the pricing of these GPUs in the longer term, especially as AMD are piling on the pressure. Speaking of AMD, let's talk a couple of bits of AMD news. The first, and this is a smaller thing, I'm just going to mention it uh, because I got a PR announcement from AMD, but basically they are placing a new game bundle offer. This is just real quick. I would highly suggest you do not pick up a high-end card from AMD like a 6900 XT or a 6950 XT or even a 6800 XT or something like that because the price is so, well, it's kind of expensive. It's not as high in many cases the 79, um, 7900 XTX, but you know, it's getting up there and I'd encourage you guys just to check, you know, save your cash. But if you're picking up another card like a 6600 XT, this is kind of nice. Um, so basically you get Dead Iron 2 as well as the Callisto protocol, which honestly is giving me the tingles in all of the right spots. It looks a really good game. A couple of other small updates. Uh, Frank Azer in an interview with PC World has actually confirmed that the um, six, sorry, the 7900 XTX is actually designed as a competitor to, well, the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte. Now, again, it's very difficult to know how that is going to happen because, for example, is it a competitor in terms of its equal in performance, or does the 7900 XTX 
underperform or does it overperform? I suspect it's going to depend upon a plethora of things, not least of which, of course, whether there's ray tracing involved. But a very interesting update actually concerns the fact that FSR3, of course, was announced during the event. And I had hypothesized in a video that FSR3 would probably work on the older architectures, but I had no solid information, basically. All I knew um, when I leaked FSR3 is it was being worked on, and then obviously AMD themselves confirmed that it's a thing, and it seems to be kind of working in a similar manner to DLSS3. There's very precious few updates onto exactly what the methodology they're using to double the performance, but it's, it does seem to be some type of, well, basically, it's pretty much the same thing. From what I understand thus far, which is very limited, so do not take this as a leak, but it does seem to be a very similar methodology to NVIDIA's DLSS3. Frank Aza, in an interview, though, with PC World, I uh, will leave a link to it in the video description, essentially said that this technology, well, first of all, it wasn't a reaction to DLSS3. Um, I do suspect that the announcement potentially was, an uh, was a reaction to DLSS3, but the actual creation of it wasn't. That doesn't really surprise me. It takes a long time for this stuff to percolate. You know, you can't just whip it up in a couple of days in the lab. So again, I'm not too surprised about that. But what is really cool is they have said that they are trying to get it to work on older generations of um, RDNA. So for example, RDNA2. What I'm about to say is speculative. This is not a leak, this is speculative, but I'm assuming um, because it has been confirmed by AMD that there are AI cores within RDNA3, I'm assuming that if FS FSR3 does work on our older generation cards, it will do so using completely different instructions. I'm assuming they will basically use the AI core with whatever exclusive RDNA3 functionality and um, instructions are part of that. And then if it's running on, say, 6800 XT, it will use basically a different instruction path, a little bit like Intel have done with XCSS. So, for example, if it's running on an A750, then it will use, you know, one specific path. But if it's using an older generation of iGPU or, say, a competitor hardware, then it will use a different instruction path. I actually did an interview with, with Intel about this or a discussion with Intel about this. It's on the channel somewhere. You can check it out if you so want. Final thing, and this concerns direct storage 1.1. I'm only going to give this as a very quick note, guys, because um, I'll probably do a much deeper dive on to, about this soon. But direct storage, of course, has been coming to PC for... I don't even know at this point, like a long time, let's just say. Um, but now it is coming out with 1.1, which basically includes GPU decompression. Um, the team at Microsoft have actually done a blog post about this. And essentially, we have huge increases in the loading times of games. Um, it will, of course, depend on the rest of your system, but potentially we could be looking at a several times increase. So uh, basically, uh, this is a direct quote, compression is generally done on the CPU because compression formats have historically been optimized for CPUs only. We, as in Microsoft, are offering an alternative method in direct storage 1.1 by moving the decompression of those assets to the GPU, known as GPU decompression. They're extremely efficient, that is graphics cards at repeatable tasks in parallel, and we can utilize that capacity capability excuse me along with the bandwidth of high speed nvme drives to do more work at once as a result the amount of time it takes for an asset to load decreases reducing loading times and improving open world streaming they also showed a benchmark about this and you can see that roughly speaking we're looking at a three times increase this is going to be incorporated in games like forspoken which is pretty damn cool i will do a much deeper dive i've already talked about direct storage back in the day i think from memory, it was prom it was prominently focused on the Xbox. Yeah, primarily focused on the Xbox, but um, some of that does, of course, have uh, some crossover with the um, with the PC. With that said, thank you very much for watching, guys. Again, there may be a video for me tomorrow, depending on what's going on, um, what time basically I managed to get ready. My flight is at like six something p.m. But normal service, well, as normal as, as normal as I can be anyway, will resume by next week. With that said, I hope you're all being safe and take care of yourselves. Bye for now.